Hi and welcome back to the Drawing Database, Professor Mark Leone. Today we're going to look at and spend 15 minutes with the drawings of Jean Onoua Fragonard, the French Rococo painter born in 1732 and died in 1806, I believe in, in Paris when he died. And we'll look at his works here in drawing, but I did want to show you his uh, one of his lovelier, uh, looser painting works here um, uh, of a, a musician. And um, it's I've seen this work uh, live at the Louvre, and it's just striking for its luminosity and its loose painterly approach. And I've seen the study for it as well. It's quite gorgeous. And it portends um, a great degree of technical... Uh, ability and striking expressive expressive ability that uh, both Watteau and uh, Fragonard both uh, possessed during what's considered a um, I would think a lesser art historical time in France a more decorative time aristocratic and decorative time for uh, French art um, uh, with the Rococo movement. Um, as well. So we get into the particulars here and we see a lovely painterly study. We could think of it still almost as a drawing with the light source coming from the top uh, left here and the uh, shadow obviously moving to the right here nice and in controlled uh, shadow forms and through uh, as well to both the uh, head area and also to the clothing area um, and then of course the background in through here and then a lovely book of music with the musical notation, um, staff notation, uh, illuminated here on the right uh, nicely to give a little bit of relief to the mostly blank uh, background. It's a lovely, a lovely sketch in oil and it, it uh, really portends great things from Fragonard both in structure of the drawing uh, and then also the lay-in of the painting and the use of color, expressive rhythmic movement, and the overall reduction of detail to make it a, a masterful uh, study. Here is a landscape, a garden landscape in what we can uh, only describe as an aristocratic sculpted type of landscape that we might see uh, around Versailles or um, in uh, Paris at Luxembourg Garden um, that my wife, uh, she spent several years in, in uh, Paris studying in living when she was younger and she certainly loved the Luxembourg Garden and the fountain area especially so if you're French and Parisian in particular we know that region certainly my wife and we love love it quite a bit in that area and, and every time we get to Paris we do, do sur spend enough time in the garden especially at the fountain area to to take all that uh, beauty in and so we see something of that nature we see the the lovely lay-in of the, the tree structure, the gesture of the trees, composition, relatively uh, placed with verticals, fairly uh, typical horizontal horizon line area, probably actually right in through there and then the verticals up. The soft uh, uh, lay-in of washes that we see both in the clouds that move us a little bit in through here. Uh, probably a chalk drawing heightened with a little bit of ink um, in the laying of the ink layers, a lighter layer, and then sub subsequently slightly darker layers, both wet into wet, and then a little probably um, uh, dried layers, and then another wet layer on top of a dry uh, layer with the most important elements uh, being the statue in this large kind of cypress type tree, um, and then the distant statue that kind of is uh, arranged in a more kind of a shell shape to kind of give it a frame and then the uh, young lady here uh, an aristocratic garb with a little wheelbarrow maybe a little gardener type with a little dog so very pastoral Arcadia like and beautiful soft drawing rendering from Fragonard. Lovely study of the figure of a reclining or sleeping young lady in very formal kind of a, what we think now is a formal dress. It might not be for aristocrats. But getting into the particulars of the chalk drawing, we see a chalk drawing with a sort of um, maroon um, 
tone to it, grayed down maroon or reddish uh, tint to that. Lovely chalk rendering. We see the light source coming a bit from the upper left in the shadows we see uh, from the uh, slightly right side of the model. And you can argue as to what's most important. Is it her or really is it the dress? Uh, I would say it's maybe even the dress, the lovely rendering of the folds, understanding the shadow pattern of the folds, but probably more important, the rolling and tilting and pitching of the folds and the suggestivity of lots of detail. But when we look deeper at it, it's very abstract. And this is this is something that's challenging for students is we can overdraw detail at times, can't we? And um, the reduction of detail gives us probably a better, even a better picture of the true nature of what we see. I think Velasquez probably did it better than uh, anybody in terms of his rendering of the um, uh, aristocracy and the many folds of dresses, etc. But as with Fragonard, I think this is equally uh, quite, quite lovely in the toning and shadowing. And so we see, again, with the light source, the rolling and the pitching, we have a form shadow here, followed by a very crisp edge, and then soft, what are soft transitions, followed by a lighter uh, edge and light. Then we have another roll into uh, form shadow, core shadow here. Then he gets into certain areas where he sees darks. These are cast shadows made by the arm, the elbow, uh, excuse me, the wrist, and then down into the fingers, and these shadows here become very nice dark cast shadows. And they're the same kind of shadows that are in through here as this frilly kind of form of the dress ends, and there's a little bit of a depth or a dimension underneath here. These uh, create some very dark cast shadows, which uh, Fragonard understands and renders those to a masterful level of completion. Very nice, quicker gestural study from imagination as we see no specific detail to tell us what's going on with the figure. So um, a lesson in that to tell when an artist uses drawings or makes drawings from imagination rather than from observation, we see less detail, we see less specific facial and bodily structure, and we see more generic figures and generally with more action. As we see here, we see a very active composition. As I'm giving you some of the gestural patterns of this lay-in drawing, this kind of call, a heralding call to some action or activity, maybe by St. Peter, maybe the dragon is coming. We see a trumpeter, angelic trumpeter here, and then a medieval soldier with a sword here. But in terms of the drawing, very light, very wispy. We see the beautiful wispy kinds of clouds that happen almost curvy, linear, puffy overall. And the same the same kind of mark making structure happens if you take a look at the calf and the feet that happens in the same kind of uh, way that is going on with the figures. And then the light source is mainly from upper left and we see everything that's in lower or right to the model in uh, or models in, in shadow as well. And then this head kind of gets us out of the composition and we go back in the composition that way. So a lovely, wispy, uh, quick gestural drawing, lovely cast shadow here, um, just suggested in the composition to give us a sense of daylight as well as an active moment. And now you can compare the last drawing with this drawing, a pen and ink drawing, that to me harkens a little uh, bit back to Raphael or Rembrandt uh, somewhat in terms of the ink technique or it could be even the etching technique. I'm not quite sure. This might be a print. I don't know for sure. Not so important for us in that we can analyze its qualities of line. So using and building up tonality through line uh, uh, stylus only or a, a light tip of an ink pen as well. And so it's a good lesson in how to build up value and uh, light and dark relationships to signify the rendering of light um, with a very tiny, you can see my little dots here, a little tiny tip and nib. So we see what is a lot of rhythmic hatching where it's moving in the same direction 
and it's layered over and over again to build up some of these darks. I don't see a lot of cross hatching, maybe some in through here in cross hatching. Again, for those of you that are not sure that the, the hatching moves in one direction and then there's a cross direction for the cross hatching as well. We see some of it there. As you layer further, the, the closer that the lines are to one another, they build up darker value. If you leave them farther apart, they portend to make a lighter value. Look at the nice directional flow that we see in the uh, up, uh, excuse me, lower leg, the calf, the ankle, the foot there to pull that foot and slight form shadow. Again, he controls nice uh, boundary edges of the arm, the uh, forearm, and the hands and fingers, just like this one through there, to give the form a sense of clarity. Uh, and also uh, integrity with respect to softer form shadows that happen all over inside the forms. And of course, some of these do have uh, boundary edges when the form overlaps. So there's a lot of complexity that uh, does go on. And then we see the uh, rendering of detail in the shadow side of the face to uh, finish out the light source coming uh, more from the right somewhat down. And let's pull out just a little bit to see the lovely uh, part of the rest of this with the angelic figure here. Uh, notice how the top of the head is pointing towards us so we get the box of the head that looks something like that with a little bit of side plane there. Really lovely control with the figures, a nice tilted uh, part of the model in through here with the volumetric figure coming around. So that's quite lovely and controlled drawing in the anatomy and also the, the volume of the form and then the beautiful gestural quality of the wings and then put mostly in shadow with nice hatched marks. And then lastly, um, we see different stroking patterns to give us rhythm all over the, the curving of forms to signify curved expression uh, as well as this palm tree. Look how lovely this is executed to roll around the cylindrical quality of that particular palm in what is probably a biblical scene of some sort.